I'm here with Erdam Koka of Koka Guitars, and his favorite guitar is the one that he built. (laughs) (laughs) Hey everybody, this is Kyle Sasser, Great Things Tampa Bay, and this is episode 30. And today uh, we're doing an interview with a local guitar maker uh, that is a luthier for those with the uh, vocabulary app on your phone. <laughs> so uh, the gentleman I'm interviewing today, his name is uh, Erdem Koka, and he is from Turkey originally, Istanbul, and uh, has been making guitars for years, currently based in Tampa, and uh, does some amazing work. And uh, I found him on Instagram, Koka Guitars. Um, it's also on Facebook. And uh, yeah, does some amazing work. Um, he's also partnered with uh, some other local luthiers here that are doing some amazing things. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the interview. It was definitely interesting and, and eye-opening and uh, a pleasure to do. Hey everybody, this is Kyle Sasser, Great Things Tampa Bay, and I'm here with Erdem Koka of Koka Guitars. And uh, he's originally from Istanbul, Turkey. He was involved in the film industry for eight years and has been a luthier for 10 years. And for those of you that don't know, a luthier is someone who builds musical instruments, and in this case, guitars. And uh, yeah, he's also played guitar for 30 years, and his favorite guitar is the one that he built. <laughs> so does all that sound right and accurate? Well, yeah, we, we obviously have inspiration from all the great brands and models from mm-hmm. the 50s and 60s, but we're trying to refine them and make it our own. Yeah, touch them up, little customizations here and there. And 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 if I just look around the workshop here, uh, just beautiful, beautiful woods and, and craftsmanship. Thank you. So, well, let's, uh, let's start at the beginning here. How did you get involved with making guitars? It is funny, when you're a guitar player, uh, you go to workshops all the time, you know, swap a pickup, make some adjustments to the neck, stuff like that. And I did that for 20 years, and uh, I really liked that environment. You know, those guys working slowly with the instrument and make it perfect for the player. And also, you know, creating something from lumber, a functional and beautiful instrument, which will, you know, create music. It's unbelievable stuff. So it's like one summer uh, when I was in film industry, I was like, maybe I should try this. I should apprentice with a master. And I did that, and I couldn't leave the workshop after that. <laughs> yeah, they, you know, that's uh, definitely a good indication that it's something that's going to be good for you long term. Is you know, you develop that passion with with so quickly. True. I don't know if it's an overstatement, but luthier is not a choice; it's a calling. They mm-hmm. say. Yeah, and you know, it's a little bit of mystery about you know people who craft musical instruments. So, uh, what's one thing that you wish that everyone knew about instrument building? Um, just listen to your luthier. (laughs) (laughs) Listen to him closely. Just uh, trust him. And because we've been doing this all our lives from, you know, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years, whatever the time is, starting from early in the morning to late at night, this is what we do. This is what we think. So obviously all guitar players, they have something in mind. They're playing their instrument. We have respect for that. We're guitar players ourselves, but we are doing this for a living. So... Trust us. Listen to us. Listen to our um, explanations and recommendations. Yeah. So it's like if if someone was building a house, uh, you wouldn't just you know command people to put things there you know here and there. You would actually you know respect the fact that they know how to do the framing and to put the roof off without it flying off in yeah, the uh, true, first hurricane. True. <laughs> exactly. So because we had those crazy ideas ourselves as well, and we tried them and we failed. So you know you can trust us. <laughs> yep. So what's what's the craziest thing you tried that didn't didn't work out? Um, just you know, trying different woods for different parts of the guitar, mm-hmm. um, trial and error, and you know, some things it's a miracle. Wow, it's so great! But then otherwise, you know, it's it's a it's a failure. So we do this, we try it, and this is not only me. Obviously, there are maybe thousands, tens of thousands of luthiers around the world. Mm-hmm in every region in and they're using all different types of woods for all different types of musical instruments yeah and now that we have internet and social media we're sharing all that information with each other 
So, and we're, we're getting the information, we're thinking about it, we're dreaming about it, <laughs> we're designing in our dreams and everything. So, um, so do, do uh, Luthier share both their successes and their failures? With, some of them. Right? Some of them. Some do, some don't. <laughs> <laughs> like in everything, yeah. Well, a lot of times, you know, because I've been, I've had a few businesses, and a lot of times it's better to know what's failed. Mm hmm than what succeeded because it's like you can you can spend most of your of your life following failures but it's like if you know somebody else has tried it and they're like you know you can kind of cut that unless you have some novel approach that's going to make the result different true um so yeah failure yeah and just as a entrepreneur failures are just you know steps along the path as important yes as important as the successes well the successful part is just if you just examine those guitars that are still with us for even after 50, 60 years, mm -hmm. some guitars are still with us. They are not changed that much. So obviously those are the successful designs. Yeah. But then they're again from 50, 60 years ago. So yeah. we have to change them a little bit. We have, I mean, you're not using the same car. You're not using the same phone. You're not using the same technology. Yeah on any other side of your life. So why in guitars? Mm -hmm. We have to refine them. We have to um, make them better if we can. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying. What's the, uh, so what, what's an example of a new technology that's a lot better than it was 50 or 60 years ago? For example, uh, glues are much better now, much stronger. Okay. You're not using the hide glue anymore. <laughs> Sorry, well, I have done some woodworking in my day, so I hide hide glue is a pain in the ass. Well, some people are still. I mean, some luthiers are still using it. For example, uh, violin makers are still using uh, hide glue. Some uh, get, get classical guitar makers maybe are using it for gluing the top, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But electric guitar making, we don't use it anymore. We have stronger glues, or maybe we used uh, carbon fiber neck uh, reinforcements in the neck. Uh, along with the truss rod just to make the necks uh, more strong and stable mm -hmm. especially if you're in florida with all the humidity and everything oh yeah things things move a lot down here and for those of, the, of you that don't know the truss rod is it's, it's just it's it's a rod in the neck to adjust the how the neck is straight or if there's a little bit of relief on it mm -hmm. to make it comfortable for the player uh, we use that for adjustment, but sometimes it's not strong enough, uh, especially after maybe five, ten years. Yeah, we don't want the we don't we want the neck to be stable. So those car uh, carbon fiber uh, rods are mm -hmm. making that with we glue them with epoxy. Oh, interesting. That, yeah, that's an, just an example. I was actually I was going to ask if it was done like a, like a fiberglass layup where you like you lay it on or if it's a rod that's epoxy then somehow. that's being done before too just uh, uh you know composite material guitars mm -hmm. aluminium guitars you know um resin guitars luthiers like trying things yeah we're trying to <laughs> you know good thing about electric guitar design is it's free just like rock and roll you know any, yeah. anything is anything you come up with if it's good it can stay in classical music world. It's different. Yeah, well, because and they've been a lot. They've been around a lot longer than electric guitars as well. True, and the, their repertoire is the same. So, playing style of that repertoire has to stay the same as well. So the instruments should not change in their mind as well. But you know, pop music, rock music is not like that. Yeah. We like change, so we can change and redesign our- Frequent change. Yes, we can redesign our instruments and we can try different materials, it's no problem. Right. Yeah, it's fascinating, fascinating. Um, all right, so is the bass guitar the unsung hero of a rock band? <laughs> well, yeah, there are many jokes about bass players and drummers, but uh, yeah, bass, bass is so important with the drums. Um, it's the foundation of the song mm -hmm. most of the times. But you don't hear it that much if you don't listen to it. Yeah, It's, you know, something like that, but it's really an important part of the song and the band. I mean, you, you understand if the bass player is not playing, Yeah, you will figure it out there's something, it's hollow, you know, it's yeah. like empty sounding, whatever. It's almost like the heartbeat to me a lot of times, like when listening to music. Like I know the drums are obviously more of a heartbeat, but to me, like the bass actually kind of carries 
True. Carries a lot of it. If he's not playing for some reason, if if the K- Jack input is problematic, and if <laughs> if you don't if you don't hear him, yep. you will understand there's something wrong with the sound. Yep. But if he's playing, it's no big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and you do make custom bass guitars. Well, yes. yeah. Tell us about the the guitars that you make here. Okay, so I started this ten years ago, and I I've been making uh, electric guitars and bass guitars and semi hollow electric guitars for ten years. I made about 100 instruments so far, and it's my 10th year now. I also repair guitars. The first guitar I made was a classical, but just because of the fact I mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, I, I understood that I have to make that design again and again and again, and I can't change that design. Yeah. Otherwise, the players, the conductors, the people in that uh, community is not happy. So classical is a, like an acoustic guitar, right? With the big, big body and all that stuff. Yes. Hollow body and yes. Yeah. So that's why I picked electric and bass so that I can make my own designs, make my own touches. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. I have seven, eight designs models. So I make, uh, you know, double cutaway guitar, single cut guitar, semi hollow guitar. Same thing with bass guitars. You know, I'm trying to reach the blues guitar player, the rock, the metal guy, and the mm-hmm. jazz guy. Yeah. But I'm trying to stay in just making electrics and basses so that I can be a um, master on building it. Because there are so many types of guitars. You have the acoustics, you have the classical, you have the fretless, yeah. you have the jazz. You, I mean, you have the... 12 string fretless semi acoustic bass guitar. Mm-hmm. And then the what, what was the one that I couldn't think of the name of? With the the metal, Dobro, yeah. maybe. <laughs> so there are so many instruments. And if you're making only a couple instruments per month, I mean, how, how are you going to be a master yeah. of all of those things? I mean, it's just a lifetime of working. So I picked one ro- uh, road and I'm trying to, you know, perfect that design. Awesome. Awesome. So you're here with a. Uh... Guitar Repair of Tampa Bay. Yes. Um, and this is your workshop. And you're also partnered with a couple other gentlemen as well, right? Yes. They're they're involved here. Yes. So it's pretty awesome. When I moved here like eight months ago from Istanbul, uh, I was just visiting local luthiers here. And I bumped into, this, into these guys. And this place, Guitar Repair of Tampa Bay, Mick Donner and Ben Schaefen, they're awesome people. They have been working in the industry for 35 years. They worked in major brands like Gibson, Dean, PV, Marsh, uh, Washburn. Okay, so yeah. So and then they opened their workshop like maybe ten years ago here, and they repair guitars here and they make guitars here. So I just you know started talking to them and they were like, yeah, if you you got a space here if you want to work with us and that was awesome for me. They they uh, welcomed me here. So mm-hmm. I've been working here maybe for four months. I'm repairing guitars here and I'm also making guitars. And mm-hmm. I just shipped a guitar to Istanbul, by the way. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Sending it back home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking speaking of in- Istanbul, you did say that you did make instruments for famous yeah. performing artists over there. Um, I'm going to try and not murder this name. Uh, Jim Tungesh. Tunje. Well, yeah. <laughs> the, the, those guitar players are, you know, uh, nationally famous like Jam Tunja, like Emre Kula, uh, Sadie Mushik, mm-hmm. um, guitar players and bass players that are famous in Turkey. Obviously, you don't hear them here. Yeah, so many, so much talent here as well. So they're not uh, globally famous, but yeah, I, I I was lucky enough to make guitars for the bedroom guitarist mm-hmm. and also the stadium guitarist. Yeah, and that's that's good. You know, like to me, that's proof of you know that your your craft is hopefully at the level it needs to be. Hopefully, yeah. I, I was just texting with a, a customer this morning. He wants to replace the pickups, so I'm gonna send him some pickups from here <laughs> to a guitar that I made over there. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's still a process. Awesome. Well, tell me about your favorite guitar currently. Well, honestly. All those guitars, like the Fenders, the Gibsons, the PRS, they're awesome. They're the standards. But then there's many small time builders around the world and I'm following them on social media and they're awesome because they're doing something different and they're um, 
pushing the envelope, like uh, Collings in, in USA. I really like their work, they're amazing. Or uh, Matsuda, an acoustic guitar maker from Japan, or Michael Spott from Germany. I mean, you can be anywhere in the world nowadays, thanks to internet and all those connections, and you can make uh, those beautiful, beautiful instruments, different designs. It's it's like an, they're, they're turning into an art form, mm. almost. So yeah, many small time boutique makers are making a difference right now. Yeah. So what's the difference between like, let's say like a Fender or a Les Paul and like a guitar that someone would get from you? The major difference is customization. So what, let's say you, you've been playing the guitar for 10 years, 20 years, and you've played all those guitars, the Fenders, the Tallys, the Les Pauls. And there are some things that you like on those guitars, but you want to combine all of those features on one guitar. That's where we step in and make a dream guitar for you. So it's not going to be the best guitar for everyone, but it's going to be the best guitar for you. All right. So it's definitely like almost like a custom tailored suit. Exactly. It's tailored to your needs, to your wants, to what you like aesthetically, the visuals, the tone, the ergonomics, everything we consider and we talk to the customer, you know, sometimes it takes 10 minutes if, if the customer knows what he wants exactly. Mm. Sometimes it takes months, you know, back and forth, trying to figure out what he really or she really wants. And, uh, you know, the wood choices, the pickup choices, all the hardware, how it should, look like how much it should weigh yeah. you know it's so funny some people like really light guitars some people want especially heavy guitars yeah there's a lot of like if it, and if you don't play guitars a lot you probably don't you know when you see them from the front they all kind of look the same yeah but just uh, like the way that the neck feels in your hand and the just like the distance between the strings and the fretboard which is called like the action right yes so yeah like that can be either very high where you have to put a lot of power into it to bring the string down so that that is all customized by a luthier so you may you, maybe you understood by now i'm a guitar fanatic you know i've been playing the, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, i've been playing the guitar for so long and i love this instrument i've been thinking about this like why is the guitar the most popular instrument in the world it's not the best designed instrument it's not mm -hmm. the perfect instrument for musical education maybe the piano is better so why is it so popular i think it's because it you can personalize it that much you cannot personalize a violin or a piano that much uh, do they even do custom paint on a Stein, on a steinway i think they all come in black <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's against the law to do that so but as you as you're saying all those small design uh features customizations mm -hmm. are we, we can we are able to do them on the guitar yeah and those little touches make a lot of difference to the player yeah and obviously you can make a lot of great music with it too and all kinds of music yeah that's the great part. I mean, from, you know, technical death metal to, mm -hmm. you know, folk music to from blues to progressive music, like everything mm -hmm. and anything you can play with the guitar. That's the beautiful yep. part. And even uh, even cracker music, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the cracker caster. Yep. So, uh, yeah. So he was telling me this in our uh, pre-interview interview. interview. Um, so they make a custom guitar here that's uh, uh, pretty special to the Tampa Bay area. So would you like to tell yes. us a little bit? Ben and Mick, the owners of this workshop, they have this brand called Cracker Caster. Mm -hmm. So Cracker Crackers uh, were the first cowboys in Florida. Yep. yep. So back when uh, back when it was all cow country here, they were the ca cowboys in Florida were called crackers because they, they cracked whips behind it, the cows. Exactly. So they got the name from that and the idea is they're using all local woods from Florida. So for the body, they're using Florida cypress. For the neck, they're using Florida ash. And for, for the fretboard, they're using um, Florida rosewood, which is from Davis Island. Just, <laughs> which is amazing. So, because um, yeah, the Davis Island is not exactly forested. No. So how how do they come about? They planted some rosewood trees, maybe in fifties. I'm not sure about the exact date, but they, they planted some rosewood trees on Davis Island because the flower of that uh, rosewood tree is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, so when a storm comes, when the tree goes down, we salvage that wood and make fretboards out of it for our Cracker Caster guitars. <laughs> and it, the ma amazing thing is Ben and Mick, uh, who, who worked in this industry for 35 years each, 
make those guitars here. So they're made in USA guitars from local woods. Pickups are made in California and all the hardware is very good. And they have a great price point, which is our uh, area code, mm-hmm. 813. <laughs> so for, Starting from 813, made in USA guitars, which is amazing. Yeah. So for $813, you can have a handmade, locally made guitar made from all local woods and the fretboard comes from davis island you summed it up <laughs> great yeah that's and we're i'm gonna have a picture of this thing up on the on the website it's it's pretty awesome and it's pretty popular too they have like 20 in order they're trying to mm-hmm. finish them but you know it's just it, people love this <laughs> guitar really yeah well yeah, it's awesome it's awesome so i have to ask because this was in the news recently um do you have any smash proof guitars <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as far as I know. All right. So for those for those of you that don't know, um, the movie Hateful Eight that came out a little while ago, something like that, um, they were lent a 145-year-old guitar by Martin, I think it was. Yeah. yeah so it's this old acoustic guitar, and uh, basically Kurt Russell smashes it. <laughs> There's a pretty funny clip on YouTube. People should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll put a link to it in the in the show notes here. So it was uh, Kurt Russell and... Jennifer Jim- Jason Lai. Yeah, and do you want to paint the picture of the scene for us? Yeah, so the, the, they're in a bar, and Jen- Jennifer is playing the guitar. And she's a guitar player, actually. She's mm-hmm. playing and singing. She's good. But then Kurt Russell, uh, for some reason, gets upset and picks the guitar up and just smashes it. But it's an old, old, vintage, <laughs> very valuable guitar, like 140 years old. Yeah. And apparently he doesn't know it's, it's, it's the real thing, but it is. So all those companies, Martin and Gibson, they have a new rule now. They're not lending their <laughs> instruments to yeah. Hollywood anymore. Yeah. And when, you, and when you watch the scene, like the look on Jennifer Jason Leigh's She's face. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh my Christ. Oh my God. I think she knows it's, it's, it's the real deal. Yeah. Maybe Kurt Russell doesn't know, <laughs> or maybe he knew and just did it anyways for the sake of the movie. He, I don't know. He seems like a guy that just does not give a shit. So maybe. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, okay. Well, is there any any challenges you've experienced, like as a as an immigrant starting up a new business here? And in- no, not really. I mean, this country is built by immigrants, so it's same process for me. I love it here, honestly. Uh, I love Florida too. And you know, the reason I I picked this place is when I moved to USA is not only my brother has been living here for fifteen years. But uh, it's really, uh, the weather is nice, people are super nice, and that lifestyle, I've, I lived in Istanbul, 15 million people yeah, city for major, so long. It's a major metropolis. Yeah, I didn't want to go to New York or LA, that you know, big city is, you know, I'm over it now. So I love Tampa, Tampa Bay area. Mm-hmm. And no, I didn't have any problems. People are always welcoming me here, and I love it. That's good, that's good. So uh, temperature-wise, how do we compare to Istanbul? We have four seasons there. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Not here. <laughs> yeah, we uh, know we're near that. <laughs> no, no, but I love hot weather. I'm very, uh, I'm built for hot weather. Mm-hmm. So I was born on July on, on a, like uh, 85 mm-hmm. degrees. Right. So I'm used to it, you know. It's a nice balmy Mediterranean day. Yeah. We, we love it when we get 85 here. I, I don't know if you know that or not. <laughs> <laughs> 85 is winter. Um, so if you had someone that was looking to get into instrument making today, how would you tell them to go about it? There are a couple ways of doing it. There is no one correct way. You can apprentice with a good luthier for sure. That's the common way of doing it. There are some good schools too. You can go for a couple months or a couple years. That's a very good way of doing it as well. But then most important thing is it has to be in you. You really, really have to want to do this. So I didn't go to a school. I didn't start uh, study with a guitar maker. I, I apprenticed with an oud maker. So I learned guitar making by myself, internet, books, YouTube, reverse engineering. So if you have that itch in you, you'll do it anyways. Yeah. But the best way is, I think, working with a master, apprenticing with a master or just studying in a school. Mm. Are you all taking on any apprentices here currently? <laughs> um, sometimes, you know. Right. It's really hard to find people who really devote their life into this. Yeah. 
it's not something you'll you'll do for half an hour and you'll become a master. It's not like that. Woodworking is really hard yeah. to master. And um, yes, so, so yeah, so I do have some experience woodworking. Yeah. And yes, I saw a picture on, on one of the woodworking forums I'm on. This guy had built a completely enclosed, fully mitered floating shelf. So it's like, and a miter is a, like a 45 degree corner, mm -hmm. so you don't have to show the end grain. Mm -hmm. So he had miters on all the corners and then on the face to inset the face, which I have attempted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it is extremely difficult to get it to look right without a lot of putty, which is my <laughs> my go-to. <laughs> so to be able, and a, and a guitar is very important. Everything has to fit together because mm -hmm. it's under it's under a lot of stress. True. Um, you know, from the, both the strings and the... Um, Tension of the strings, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, True. It has to be really strong. The neck and the body has to fit each other perfectly, even if it's set neck or bolt-on bolt neck, doesn't matter. It, it has to be a tight fit. The neck has to be consistent and the body has to be balanced for the player to play. I mean, when you're making a table, you consider some ergonomical features, mm -hmm. but you're make, when you're making a guitar, then you have to think about the tone as well. So everything changes between 45 millimeters and 50 millimeters. Yeah, So because the wood is vibrating a little different. Exactly, at that yes. Point. And when you're making a custom guitar from different woods, trying different pickups on it, and a certain, certain player is playing, it's an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, well, how can uh, how can people get in contact with you? Social media is the best way. Coca Guitars on Facebook and on Instagram. I'm trying to be pretty busy. Mm -hmm. And also, as I said, we're in uh, Guitar Repair of Tampa Bay. We're repairing and making guitars here. So people are welcome to take the tour here. Awesome. Awesome. And we'll have all those details in the show notes. Uh, so Erdem, thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> So again, uh, I'd like to thank Erdem for uh, taking the time to uh, sit with me and do that interview. Definitely uh, it means a lot to me. And uh, I can tell you, like sitting in his uh, workshop and office and just seeing the sheer number of guitars and craftsmanship that was uh, was in that place uh, was very humbling. Um, you know, I've tried to do some woodworking myself in the past. And um, I can tell you that what he does is not easy. <laughs> it's definitely a craft and a skill that takes years to perfect. And uh, yeah, they're beautiful. And uh, also, yeah, the crack, the Cracker Caster, we do have pictures of that. It's on the show notes. It's also on the website, greatthingstb.com. So go over there, take a look, or follow the link in the show notes. And now segment two. Your fact of the day. There are 80 million, 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 million. Actually, I don't I don't really know how many millions this is. It's an 80 with 67 zeros after it. Um, so there is that many ways to arrange a deck of 52 cards. And that is more than the number of atoms in the Earth. All right. So that's going to wrap up episode three zero for Great Things Tampa Bay. I uh, hope you've been enjoying these past 30 episodes. Be sure to go back and take a listen to some previous ones. Uh, we got some good stuff back there that's uh, pretty much applicable year round, uh, you know, except for like the Florida <laughs> State Fair, Florida Strawberry Festival. Uh, but, you know, all of the other stuff um, is still great. Um, Hall and Franklin, still amazing. Uh, Mount Dora, still there. And uh, Chief's Creole Cafe is still killing it with the uh, Creole food over in St. Petersburg. So uh, do be sure to go back and uh, listen to our archives. If you have any questions or suggestions, please go to the website, greatthingstb.com. And uh, along the top there, you'll find some links to uh, submit your uh, favorite restaurants. Or, you know, maybe, you know, this is a guitar episode. Um, so if you are a musician or you know a musician, I actually do, um, you know, I like to promote local musicians at the end of the podcast. So please just go there and submit your songs. And, you know, you might be featured at the end of one of my podcast episodes. And, you, get, you know, you get like a shout out and all that stuff. 
Uh, let's see what else. So, uh, also a local realtor. And if you're looking to find your own great place in Tampa Bay, I would love to help you out um, and find a new home for yourself. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to me in that aspect, um, again, just go to the website, greatthingstv.com. And uh, at the top, you'll find a link to contact me for real estate related items. Uh, so playing us out today is Anya with Slide, which is a very fun kind of disco beat, kind of takes you back to that 70s thing uh, without all of the... Uh, you know, the, the downside or well, I guess upsides in some manners, but, you know, <laughs> but uh, very fun. It's got that funky 70s beat and uh, I'm just going to stop trying to describe this song because I'm not doing a very good job. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to share us with a friend. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about Coca guitars or if you like this song, there's going to be a link in the show notes. Um, so just pull up those details and you'll find it. So anyway, thanks again, and I'll see you next episode.